Good morning, everybody. You are here with Bright Lights and our Digging Up Dinos Flipside Camp. My name is Renee and I'm the Education Coordinator for Bright Lights. I will be serving as one of your hosts and my friends Lori and Lindsay will also be helping with hosting duties. I just wanna cover a few things before we get started and then I will turn this over to Mr. Dill so that the fun can begin. Because we are in a webinar format, that means we can't see your picture or hear you. However, if you wanna ask a question or respond to something that Mr. Dill says, just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. If you type in your question or your comment, myself or Miss Lori or Miss Lindsay will see it and then we can relay that to Mr. Dills um, so that you can um, send a question or a comment. I also want to let you know that we are recording this session. Uh, we will have a link in a few days on our YouTube channel to this camp so you can watch it again or you can share it with someone new if you want to. And finally, we would like to thank Black Hills Energy for supporting Bright Lights and sponsoring our Flipside Camp this summer. And with that, I am going to turn this over to Mr. Dills so we can begin our adventure as paleontologists. Good morning, Mr. Dills. Good morning. Welcome everybody to uh, Digging Up Dinos. Um, like Renee, Renee said, my name is Mr. Dills. Um, I am a teacher at Pershing Elementary in Lincoln, Nebraska. So if you happen to be in Lincoln and you go to Pershing and you're going to be in second grade, you could have me as your teacher. But for now, we're going to learn about dinosaurs today, uh, today and all week long here. Um, so I'm going to walk you through what the week might look like before we dive into the uh, um, dinosaur fun. So today we're going to talk about dinosaur diets. Um, dinosaurs had a very unique uh, diet on how they ate, what they ate, and when they ate. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, there are three words that we're going to have to know and remember throughout the day. The first one is carnivore. So carnivore, C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-E, carnivore. Carnivore is that meat-eating dinosaur. Um, a fun way I remember carnivore is you kind of like growl, all right? So everyone get ready. We're gonna growl, you're gonna show your teeth like carnivore, ready? Carnivore, you're really hungry. You're a meat-eating dinosaur, all right? The next one is herbivore. Hmm. So if we have a meat-eating dinosaur, and that's a carnivore, does anyone know what a herbivore might mean hmm mr dills this is miss Lori, and i always have a hard time because it starts with an h so i want to say herbivore you are right yeah that herbivore that h kind of throws some people off uh but that h is silent it doesn't oh. say anything so okay. we just go herbivore and a fun way i remember it and this might be like a like a fifth grade word, it's a pretty big word. Herb, it's kind of that fun little word there. Herb, if you hear like your parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles talk about herbs and spices, that, oh. that's a plant, herbs and spices. So the way I remember herbivore is you're kind of like a plant blowing in the wind going herbivore you're just a plant blowing in the wind not a care in the world herbivore it eats plants so if a dinosaur is an herbivore it only eats plants well, we had lots of our friends in our our chat today um jace and addison and alex and anna and ned they all knew that it was a plant eater they are experts at this point. I think they are, they could probably teach this class. <laughs> <laughs> the next one we have in our last word is omnivore. An omnivore looks like this. Omnivore, so we have an herbivore and that's gonna eat plants. Mm -hmm. We have a carnivore and that's going to eat meat. Hmm, what's going to be an omnivore then oh hmm. Hmm. Lord, do you have any guesses what an omnivore could be i'm I, i'm kind of looking at the chat so some of my friends are telling me that it's they eat both meat and plants 
Yeah, I just saw Pablo come across. Yeah. yeah. Both an omnivore is going to eat both plants and meat. And oddly enough, we are omnivores. We have the teeth structure to both eat plants and meat. So with your tongue, if you feel around your tongue, if you go in the back, we have a thing called molars in the back there. Mm. Molars are going to be a flat type of tooth. It's going to be really flat. So you're going to chew it up there. Uh, and then towards the front of our teeth, we have those pointier teeth that's going to be able to rip into meat or tear a hamburger uh, up in the 4th of July. Okay, so we're able to do both. So we are omnivores. There's not a lot of dinosaurs that were omnivores, but there were a few. Perfect. So now that we have herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore in our brains, we're going to take it to the paleontologist lab and we're going to do some digging up. Ooh, so Renee, that sounds fun. To the paleontologist lab. All right. Mr. Off Dill we go. Lab, off he goes. Anna says that those molar teeth for her are flat and bumpy. Good for chewing. All right. Miss Lori, can you hear me? I can, and I see sand and some paintbrushes. That's right. So one of the things that we'll do is every day, we're going to have a daily dino. All right. So now that we know the dinosaur diets, we're going to do some digging. Now, if you were in my uh, Bright Lights class in person, you all would be able to uh, be able to uh, dig up some dinosaurs, discover some dinosaurs. But instead, I'll do the digging, and I want you to guess what dinosaur might be hidden down below. You can go ahead and put it in chat um, as we start digging here. All right, and we might find other things along with the dinosaur because if we were in a dinosaur dig, there's so many things that could be in here besides just the dinosaur we're looking for. Already, you guys might see a bone over here. So oh. in the paleontology world, they would use a brush if it's really loose sand, it's like we have really loose sand right now. So we're able to just use a simple paintbrush. Uh, it would be really hot outside, so we would make sure we have a hat like uh, Miss Lori does to make sure we don't get sunburnt in that sun. But we're going to do some more digging here. We're lucky because we have that sediment sand. Now, I do see a little head of a, head of a dinosaur right here. If you're able to see that too. Oh my gosh, I don't know what type of dinosaur that might be. We're going to do some more digging here. Hmm. hmm. Well, it has, it looks like it might have walked on its four legs. Oh my gosh, we're gonna do some more digging here. Yeah. Oh, we have we have a friend that has a uh, has an idea. Says, I think Alex said a stegosaurus. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, an underwater. Ooh, that would be kind of cool if it was an underwater dinosaur. All right, we're gonna do some more digging here. Now, what's gonna be able to help us is once we get that tail kind of uncovered. And with that ah. back, we'll start to see, oh, all right. So it has these like thin type things. Hmm. We're gonna do some more digging here. Oh, there's its head. There's its head. It's got a, it's got a shorter neck. So I don't think it's a brachiosaurus because brachios mm -hmm. have huge necks. I think we can eliminate that one here. Hmm. Hmm. But he sure has those neat plates on the back of his. It has some really neat plates. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. I think we might be able to lift it out here. Ah, if we they're really you know. paleontologists. We'd be really careful. Now, if we were a paleontology, um, we were a paleontologist, we wouldn't be able to find a dinosaur that had skin on this, like this, because they're all bones, they're all fossils. But. It would be up to us as uh, paleontologists to kind of figure out where do those bones go together. So 
this is what our daily dinosaur is. It looks like it has some plates on the back. It has a spiky tail at the end. Hmm, I bet that might be to, to uh, defend itself. When we're talking about the dinosaur, the diet, it doesn't really look like it has claws, so hmm. it probably can't rip up meat too well. Its mouth really isn't open, but it has more of a beak, so probably not that sharp of teeth down um, in the mouth. So I wonder what type of diet this dinosaur may have had. Hmm. Renee, if we'll go back to the main uh, paleontology area, we're going to learn more about our friend Stegosaurus. You got it. My favorite thing about a Stegosaurus is those spikes on the end of its tail. It looks almost like a tool. There's Mr. Dills. All right, so, so it's quite a ways to travel from a paleontology lab to uh, the main area. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna learn all about our new friend Stegosaurus. A lot of guesses I saw in the chats and they were pretty spot on. Okay, so we are going to learn all about the st uh, Stegosaurus. So this is day one of dinosaur discovery. So if you guessed Stegosaurus, you are 100% correct. That is fantastic. Our friend does look like this. He has the plates on the back of his back. He has some spiky uh, ends at the tail. He doesn't have many claws. Uh, he has more of just a flat foot. And he walked on all four legs. So the Stegosaurus is the largest and most well-known member of the Stegosauri, uh, Stegosauride family and of armed dinosaurs. It used to be able to grow as long as 30 feet. So 30 feet, roughly 28 to 30 feet, is about the size of two cars. So if you had like your mom's car or your dad's car or an aunt's car or whoever it might be, two cars parked right behind one another, that's how long the Stegosaurus uh, used to grow. So that's a pretty long dinosaur. Some fun facts about that Stegosaurus is that is an herbivore. It has that flat tooth, uh, so it would have eaten grass, okay, or other type of plants something that's close to the ground because it didn't really stand up too tall compared to all the other dinosaurs. And a fun fact, and this is kind of funny, Miss Laura, you'll like this. Okay. All right, this is kind of funny. A paleontology, paleontologist, when they first discovered a stegosaurus, they thought it had a brain in its butt area. Eat. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Could you imagine having a brain in your butt? Now they thought that because of the way it could control its tail so well. So they oh. thought, oh, it's pretty good with its tail. It must have a brain in its butt. Turns out that's not true. <laughs> Mr. Dills, his head is so little. I was just thinking right before you said that, I thought, gosh, maybe it has a little tiny brain. You know, that it does have a little tiny brain. Most dinosaurs have super tiny brains and we'll uh, learn more about what dinosaurs had what type of brains later in the week. But Ooh. this one, Stegosaurus, had a super tiny brain. Like I said, most dinosaurs didn't have the big brains we had because we store a lot of knowledge. We store a lot of facts and things in our brain and dinosaurs just weren't that complicated. They were pretty simple. Hmm. All right. So now that we've learned about the Stegosaurus, we are going to go and read a book called Catch a Dinosaur. And hopefully this week we will be able to catch some dinosaurs. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to help us out. So uh, Renee, will you take us to the paleontology uh, lab again? Absolutely, be careful on your journey. Thanks. I know it's a ways. <laughs> 
And Anna says that, and I think she's referencing the size of a stegosaurus brain. She said it's like a plum. And I always think of our brains are like a cauliflower, but a plum, that's tiny. All right. So one thing I also wanted to show you before I read the book is I do have some actual jaws here. And I'm curious if anyone might have a guess on where these jaws come from. Hmm. They're quite big. Pretty hmm. big jaw here. Hmm. Anyone have a guess on where the jaw might come from? Ooh, we have a T-Rex. I wish I had a T-Rex school. That would be super fun. This actually, and I'll grab the other part here. This actually came from a cow school. All right, so this is a cow jaw. Uh, these are fairly flat. They kind of look pointy, but they're actually considered that herbivore type tooth. They're flatter. They don't really have a triangular point. They're more of a rectangle. So these are the actual teeth. You can see he must have not brushed his teeth because he lost a few, but he does have some back here. And this is a cow skull. So when it was eating grass, it would push the grass to the back of its jaw and just munch and munch and munch and munch and really grind up that grass before it swallowed it. A lot like the stegosaurus would. Hmm. So if you've never seen a cow jaw, that is what a cow jaw looks like. All right, so now we're gonna try and figure out how do we catch a dinosaur? All right. Mr. Dills, can we turn yeah. the book the other way? Because right now it's kind of going the wrong way for us. Like this? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, we'll do it that way. All right. So there we go. Tomorrow's the big science fair. I've never won before, but this year I know I cannot lose because <gasps> I'm catching a dinosaur. Oh, so he's getting into the science fair. First prize is a bike. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if any of our friends today have ever been in a science fair. Hmm. The crocs and sharks we know today were here when the dinosaurs ruled. It makes no sense all dinosaurs are gone. On this point, I cannot be fooled. Oh. His room kind of looks like Mr. Dills is right now. He has a lot of dinosaur stuff laying around. We head straight to the local park to pick up some kind of trail. Wait, what's that thing over there? Yes, I think it's a dinosaur tail. Oh, oh there's the dinosaur oh. tail. Whoa, imagine seeing that at a park. The dino is more bird than reptile, we learned in science class. That's true. And this one left something behind. I've got our first dinosaur clue. Oh, so he left a feather and some footprints. Okay. Oh, he didn't eat the bird seed. He hopped right over that. He is not interested in the bird seed. So they must have tried bird seed because dinosaurs are a distant relative of the common bird. Hmm. Looks like we've got a plant eater. The Venus flytrap had no chance. She danced right by our volcano and knew the exit at first glance. Oh, a plant eater. Hmm. Oh. So if I remember correctly, that has to be a herbivore dinosaur. All right, so they think they're dealing with an herbivore dinosaur. Hmm. Oh. This clever girl runs fast as the wind and dodged our trap in a hurry. 
but we've got more in store for her, so this is no time to worry. Let's see what they tried doing here. Oh, they said dinosaurs swim for free. They were trying to sneak her into this pool that they filled with slime. Oh my goodness. But That's she hopped quite right over high. that. I know, she jumped really high. That's quite the dinosaur trap. Oh. Was she watching when I tested each trap with my action figures and toy bricks? It's like she knows how each trap works. Can it be she's onto my tricks? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it looked like they tried getting the skateboard that she was riding to be magnetized, and trapping her like that. Oh, that's pretty elaborate. I don't know. If oh, I we can see a little more of her there. Yeah, so it looks like she had some two high lengths. Oh, I wonder if she's going to stand on those two high lengths. I wonder if that's how she walks. Oh. <laughs> Well, that didn't go according to plan. She slipped right past our noses. And if that wasn't bad enough, I ruined mom's prize winning roses. Oh, oh mom's not going to be very happy about that one. This is, is one smart dinosaur. And we can't blame it on the dino. No. And look, it kind of looks like it might have some claws. We'll have to see. Oh. Hmm. A little clue into there. We made a prehistoric playground with lots of friends to play. Our dino won't be able to resist. This time she won't get away. Oh, let's see if the dinosaur's hmm. gonna fall for hanging with some dino friends. They are ready for her. Hmm. I don't know if they'll ever catch this dinosaur. Oh, let's see here. Tall enough to stop a giant. Our trap had pulleys, ropes, and decks, but this dino smashed it all to pieces. She should be called T-Rex. Oh. oh, she has short little arms here. It does look like she has some claws. Yeah. Oh, they're messing with quite the smart dinosaur. She went right through that trap. I wonder what dinosaur it could be. My mom is an engineer, so I've learned a trick or three. Our Robo Hugger 9000 won't let our dino go free. Uh, so now mom's on it. So maybe she's okay with the roses. Robo Hugger. 9,000. Practicing on maybe an iguana there, hugging that iguana. All right, let's see if Robo works. That clever dino tricked our robot by dressing like a bird. If I don't catch the dinosaur soon, I'll be lucky to come in third. Uh, so grab the, uh, the stuffed uh, dinosaur because oh. it's wearing a chicken mask. <laughs> it took the robot. Oh my goodness. We didn't catch the dinosaur. I don't know what to do. But my friends remind me we still have a science fair entry or two. Oh, so now he's kind of disappointed. Aww. Oh. Look at all the traps that they used. Oh. oh, we did it. Oh, so they won the science fair. Better luck next time. So they showed their their hugger to <laughs> hugging robot and their slime as part of their project, but they didn't catch the dinosaur. Yeah, they didn't catch the dinosaur. Looks like he's in the sewer of the school, it kind of looks like. It's kind of mm. just chilling in there now. Reading the newspaper. Yeah. But they must have, oops, sorry. They must have used all of the things, all the science fair or all the uh, traps and showed those off. And that must be how they won the science fair. 
Oh, yeah. All right. So hopefully by the end of this week, we might be able to catch some sort of dinosaur or just know a bit more about dinosaurs so we could catch them. We're going to go and move into a craft here. And our first craft is going to be a dinosaur puppet. So when you go to the Bright Lights webpage, there are a couple things you can print. Um, there's a sheet that looks like this, and there's also one that has the Triceratops. So this is the Brachiosaurus. There is a Triceratops, and then there's also an Allosaurus one. The Allosaurus is the meat eater. But I'm gonna show you guys how to put the puppet together because um, it can be a bit confusing, but we'll be able to walk away with a nice dinosaur puppet that when I open the bag, it shows its teeth. And this must be an herbivore because of those flat teeth. All right. So once you have your sheet that you chose, like I said, there's three different dinosaurs on that Bright Lights webpage. You can choose whichever one you want. It's all the same. Uh, you might add some color. And the fun thing, and I won't color all of it, but the fun thing about coloring a dinosaur is no one knows what color dinosaurs actually were. So I might think, you know what, Brachiosauruses are blue. Like they are for sure blue. Why else would they have a B in their name? Blue Brachiosauruses. So I might color all of that blue. What you do next then, is you wanna grab a pair of scissors and what you'll do is you'll cut along the black edge, the darker black edge here. So I'm not gonna do a great job cutting through it. I'm just gonna kinda round it out as much as I can. You all are probably better cutters than I am. Mm -hmm. You all know a lot, a lot more about dinosaurs than I do, it looks like. Our chat, Ms. Gills, Lindsay has posted the link, the files, and the material list for the camp. So Perfect. if you don't have those, that's a good place to go, and you can print things out for the rest of the week as well. Perfect. All right, so you now I'm going to cut out his jaw. You sound like you're chewing something with those scissors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I have both my head and my jaw. So now I take a paper bag. I have white paper bags, but any color of paper bag, um, the other one's like brown, uh, will do. And this can be kind of tricky here because many people just want to glue them face down like that and call it good. But what's going to happen is when you open up the paper bag, it's not going to be able to move its mouth. So make sure when you have your paper bag that the flippy part is on top. Okay. And then you want to take the head of your dinosaur and you kind of want to align it there. So you want to make sure that you don't glue past the flippy part. So here's what I do. Here's a little trick. I just put glue on the part that I want. I'm not going to glue the entire back here because that's going to cause me problems. So I'm just going to put down some glue. Okay, because if you, if you put it below the flap, you would be gluing his mouth shut. Yeah, and then he won't be able to eat, which would be a terrible, terrible thing. So we're going to put his head on first here. Boop. Give it some pressure. Mm. So now we have the head. So when we open it here, his head's now moving, but now he has no oh. mouth. He can't eat right now. He has no mouth. <laughs> so we're going to give our dinosaur a mouth. 
so with that, you just apply glue to the back here, as so. Yeah, it's a good tip to put the glue on the on the parts of the dinosaur instead of on the sack, it seems like. Yes, Mr. Dills learned the hard way. There's a lot of dinosaurs <laughs> that you can no longer eat because of Mr. Dills. So we're going to slide the mouth right underneath, not on the flap, but you're going to lift the flap up like a trunk of a car, lift it up. It's going to put it down. Oh. Put some pressure on it. So now he has that jawline. So now when we put our hands into the puppet, it can now eat. <laughs> Look at that. That is something. When you go, you might start to discover what type of dinosaur diet your dinosaur puppet had. This is a Brachiosaurus, and we'll be able to talk more about Brachiosauruses, but when I open its mouth, I see these like flat teeth, these really mm -hmm. flat teeth. And so I know from earlier today that flat teeth mean herbivore because it doesn't have that sharp teeth. It doesn't have that sharp tooth to cut into meat. Okay. All right, so that is craft number one. We're going to go and head back to the main room of our paleontology uh, room. So Renee, if you'll take us over there, we'll have a video we'll watch. Awesome, you bet. All right, so now that I've traveled from the paleontology lab back to the main room, we have a video that, uh, I don't know about you, but Mr. Dills loves music. And if we can have a music with dinosaurs, that's like the best song ever. So I'm going to share with you all one of my favorite songs, and it's all about dinosaurs. So we're going to exit out of that because we don't need dinosaur discovery. Hmm. No? All right. Feel free to get up and dance or do a little dino stunt um, as you're listening to this song. They used to walk, they used to swim, they used to fly with a toothy grin. Some ate plants and some ate meat, some walked around on just two feet. Oh, the dinosaurs, big as trees, dinosaurs, brains like peas, jaws and claws and teeth and bones. I used to growl and groan and moan. <laughs> some had feathers, some had scales, spikes and clubs and whip like tails. They fought like dragons, the earth sure shook. The volcano sizzled and the lava cooked. Oh, the dinosaurs. Big as trees, the dinosaurs, brains like peas, jaws and claws and teeth and bones that used to growl and groan and moan. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex was a terrible king. The stegosaurus tail could really swing. Brachiosaurus liked to stop. Trachodon would chew and chop. Oh, the dinosaurs, the big ass trees. The dinosaurs, brains like peas, jaws and claws and teeth and bone. They used to growl and groan and moan. <laughs> the earth 
hundred million years without worries, cares, or fears. Then one day they hit the soil. Now their fossils, gas, and oil. Oh, the dinosaurs, the big ass trees, the dinosaurs, brains like peas, jaws and claws, and teeth and bone. Used to growl and groan and moan. Or the dinosaurs, the big ass trees, the dinosaurs, brains like peas, jaws and claws and teeth and bone. That used to growl and groan and moan. All right. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes in the morning, I growl like a dinosaur because I'm just like, Rah! especially in these summer days. All right. So we are going to go back to the paleontology lab. We're doing a lot of traveling today, so I'm glad you're here with me. Um, and we're going to work on our second craft, which is going to do more about the dinosaur diets. Mr. Dill, sometimes I think I do that kind of growl before I've had coffee in the morning. Yeah, I know when, like I said, or my pug, my pug will always do that growl in the mornings because she is not a morning person. All right, so our next craft for today is what I call a clothespin dinosaur. For a clothespin dinosaur, you'll need the uh, printed sheet, which is once again on that Bright Lights webpage. You'll need a clothespin, and you'll need either glue or tape, it doesn't really matter which one, um, and then a pair of scissors. And if you'd like to color it, you'll need uh, something to color it with. So, at the end of this craft, we'll be able to walk away with a T-Rex that when we close or open the clothespin, it also opens its mouth. Like it's really hungry for something to eat, okay? So I'm gonna show you the tricks on how to do a clothespin dinosaur because they can be a bit tough. Um, like I said, a lot like the hand puppets, uh, there are some T-Rexes out there now that can no longer eat because Mr. Dills glued their mouth shut. <laughs> uh, which might be a good thing. I don't know. If, imagine if we had T-Rexes walking around that could just eat us. That would be kind of crazy. So you'll want to just cut out these. This might be a time if you're doing this with us to like color um, while I cut out some of the jaws. So it looks One. like you have two sets of, or two teeth one dino body and a jaw. And a jaw, yeah. One thing you might notice about the dinosaur we're working with now is it has pointier teeth. It has like more triangular teeth than the dinosaurs that we have worked with. We've talked about a stegosaurus. We talked about that brachiosaurus puppet. But now it's a bit different because this dinosaur doesn't have those flat teeth. So if it doesn't have that flat teeth and it has more pointy teeth, I wonder what diet it might have. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the mouth open just so you can kind of tell. Well, being such a cloudy day today, this is a great thing for the, our friends to do this afternoon. Oh, yeah. And it's one of those things that you could print out multiple, and you could have a whole horde of T-Rexes just walking around the house. Uh, <laughs> as long as you got a closed pin, you can have a T-Rex yourself. Okay. So now that I have my uh, T-Rex cutouts, um, not as nice as I'm sure you all will be cutting out your T-Rexes. 
Um, you want to have your clothespin. The easiest way to start is with the teeth. Um, and the teeth you'll want to cut out here. I'm just going to do a bit better. And when you go to glue them, you want to flip it uh, face, whoop, so it's facing um, down here, because when you open it, it's going to show the T, okay? Whoop. So we're going to go ahead and glue down this one. Now these teeth aren't going to be as great as the teeth that I'm sure you guys will have but I just wanted to kind of run through it here. That way when you do it later today, you have an idea on what to do, okay? So we have one tooth or one jaw, I should say, uh, on that clothespin. So now if we need the bottom half of the teeth, I don't know about you, Miss Lori, but when I start cutting out teeth, I have to be real careful because sometimes they snip a tooth off. <laughs> we want to give him all the teeth so he can <laughs> lots of, well, I decided I think those are carnivore teeth, huh? Oh, what makes you think they're carnivore teeth? Because, because they're like triangles, so they're great for ripping meat. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think you might be able to graduate with a paleontology degree, Miss Lori. Oh, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, so now we have our teeth. Okay. Um, 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 oh. um, it's ready to be eat. It's ready to eat, but now we need a dinosaur. We gotta di we gotta attach a dinosaur to it. So when you go, so the teeth are on that back side. You can also show it on this one. The teeth, teeth are on that back side, but you can still kind of see it when it opens its jaw. You can see the ferocious teeth that's ready to eat some meat. So once you have your teeth down, you want to flip your clothespin around. So therefore, it's a blank clothespin on this side. And that's where your jaw is going to come into play. Okay. So your jaw, when you cut it out, Oh. You'll want to kind of put it on the bottom of the clothespin. Okay? On the bottom, like, um, okay, so it, the, if it is two pieces, and it'd be the bottom one. I see. Yeah, it's going to be the bottom piece of that clothespin. Okay? We've had a friend that asks if you could slow down just a bit. Yes, we will kind of slow it down here. That way I can also figure out where the jaw might go. So teeth on the back, top and bottom, jaw on the front, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Glue. Teeth on that back. We're going to glue a little bit. We're going to put the jaw on. You might think, whoa, that's a big jaw. And you are right. But the T-Rex eats a lot of meat, so it has to have that big jaw. Oh, so please. now uh, Mr. I have Dallas? to. Yes. Could you bring the um, close plan pin a little closer to the camera? Yes. So we have the teeth on the back. Ah. Then we have the jaw on the bottom of the clothespin. So to reference, I'm going to grab a new clothespin so you kind of know what I'm talking about here. Okay. So this is what our clothespin looked like before. And we put, we put the jaw on the bottom of it. And then when we flip over that clothespin, we put the teeth on the back of the clothespin. Okay. Okay, so we flip it back over. 
Once again, we have that jaw on the bottom of the clothespin. And notice how I'm still able to move this top. Like it's still moving, it's not glued down because we were really careful with how much glue we use and where we're gluing it. I see, okay, that looks great. Then when you're all ready, this is the hardest part. Once you have that, you are all good. You'll put then your dinosaur onto the clothespin. Now here's a trick here with it. You want to only put glue on your clothespin here. And we'll, I'll tell you why here. When you put glue just on your clothespin, it's gonna help you not use too much glue, okay? Because you'll wanna just put the jaw, the top of the jaw on the clothespin. Ah, you didn't glue it, glue it together, yay! So now our T-Rex can move its jaw because all we did is we just put glue on the clothespin here so we didn't glue the entire back. And it probably helps if we let it dry, but because our T-Rex is now jawless. There we go. Okay. So now when I open its mouth, it's able to move its mouth. Okay. And it's best to keep, let it dry uh, for, you know, 10, 12 minutes. It doesn't take that long to dry because you're not using that much glue. But set it aside before you start moving it up and down, um, before you start doing the puppeteer work. Uh, because once it's dry, then it stays there. Elmer's glue or any type of tape, unless you're using tape, tape would be different. But I added a googly eye because I'm a fan of googly eyes. So if you have a googly eye, you can then do it. You could even dress up your dinosaur. You could maybe draw spots on your dinosaur. Really up to you. But once you have that jaw, you are good to go. Okay? Okay. All right. We are going to move back to the main room of the paleontology area. Um, to show you one last thing before you kind of start wrapping up for today. Sounds good, Mr. Dills. All right, so we've done two crafts today. That last one um, is a bit trickier. But if you have a parent or a big brother or aunt or uncle, um, I'm sure they'd be able to help you out there. Uh, but before we go for today, um, we do have a kind of a pretty cool thing that you can do here later on. So I wanna show it to you before we leave um, today. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, so because you all are taking this paleontology class. Let me exit out of this guy here because we don't need you. You'll have access here later on, um, probably either later tonight or tomorrow, but I wanna show you around um, just so you understand what it is. You'll have access to Mr. Dill's virtual Bright Lights classroom, okay? So there's a lot of things that you can do in this classroom, even after you leave today. So as you can tell on my cursor, right now it's just a black uh, triangle. But if I were to hover over something like this T-Rex, so it says right here, TV is a dino song. So if I clicked on that, it's gonna take me to the dinosaur song that we listened to, okay? If you wanted to learn more about Mr. Dills, 
you could just click on Mr. Dills. And it says door goes to day one activities. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this door and it's gonna take me to a whole new room. So I'm gonna look up here on this bulletin board. Left door is gonna take me back home. It's gonna take me to the main room. The right door is gonna take me to a different activity, which is fine. Uh, Stegosaurus, okay, so we're gonna Stegosaurus. We're gonna click on that. And it's gonna take me to a coloring page. If I click on the Allosaurus, it's gonna take me to some uh, dino themed online games. That's going to just help me learn more about dinosaurs. So this is just something that you can do. Uh, later on, it will be posted. Um, and then you'll have access to, access to that. And I'll go over each day about what's in each room as we go. But I just wanted you all to know that that's something that you can do as well. All right. So today we have learned so much about dinosaurs. We have learned what a carnivore, er, carnivore. We've learned about the herbivores, the plant eaters, and we've learned about the omnivores. Now, because I didn't share my hint about the omnivores. Do you know how I remember omnivore? So omnivore to me sounds like all the food, omnivore. They eat all the food. So what I do to remember omnivore is I go omnivore, all the food. They don't care what it is. They're gonna eat all the food, omnivore. So we have carnivore, we have herbivore, and we have omnivore, all the food. All right. So I will end with this and in chat, you can put your answer, but because we have 4th of July coming up here, um, here's a little uh, joke that I'm wondering if you know the answer to. What is a dinosaur's favorite firework? Dinosaur's what favorite. What is a dinosaur's favorite firework? Hmm. I don't know, Mr. Dells, it sounds tricky. So we have some answers in chat <gasps> here. I see it, I think. Hmm. Jace is right. He said dynamite. Yeah, a favorite <laughs> firework for a dinosaur has to be dynamite. That's a good one. Perfect. Wonderful job, Jace. That was great. Uh, great job today with everyone. You all knew what a carnivore was. You've learned what an herbivore is. And some of you even knew what an omnivore is. And then we had people guess what the daily dino was, which was the stegosaurus. So many of you already know your dinosaurs, which is great. And I can't wait if you come back tomorrow to learn more about dinosaurs with you all. All right, Mr. Dills, that was awesome. Thank you so much to you and Miss Lori for giving us more info on those dinos. And boys and girls, I hope that you can join us tomorrow again at 10 o'clock. We'll be we'll right, be right back, back here. And we can learn more dino facts from Mr. Dills. I bet there's going to be a few crafts. Um, and remember, you can go to brightlights.org if you want to print some of those um, materials before the class starts. So we will be right back here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Bye.